Hello and welcome to the Garage Series. My name is Jeremy Chapman. And I'm David Alexander. So David, today is a huge day for Office. Today really is a big day for Office, Jeremy. And the reason is because we're adding a brand new authoring application to the Office family. And when I say authoring applications, I'm really talking about core authoring apps like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and OneNote. The core things that you use to create content. And today, we're adding a brand new app called Sway. And over the next 10 minutes, we're going to see Sway in action. We're going to learn about the background of this capability, and we're going to catch up with lead engineer on Sway, Chris Prattley, to hear his vision. But before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia. True or false, all you need is a web browser to view a Sway. Stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. So David, what exactly is Sway? Is it a blog? Is it a presentation? Is it a document? Well, Jeremy, it can be all of those things, but it's not limited to any one of those things. So what exactly does Sway make? Well, just like Word makes all types of documents, like you see different examples here, right. and PowerPoint makes all types of presentations, Sway makes Sways, and it's a new thing. It's a digitally authentic, web-first new type of content, and it does so with assisted authoring and content aggregation. I'm guessing what we're seeing here is actually a Sway. Yeah, Jeremy, this is a Sway. So it's truly a dynamic, interactive web canvas of your ideas. And when I say interactive, it really means that it can contain all sorts of interactive elements. Like here's a tweet embedded that I can just start to interact with right from the canvas itself. And what that really means is it is indeed dynamic. dynamic. And because it's been built from the web, that means that it's going to authentically work across any device that you're using it on. Right, so what does this actually solve for? Well, the reason we made it are a fewfold. So first, it's a statement about information and the state of all the content that people have access to. So now more than ever before, people have all types of content and multimedia that they want to use when they're expressing their ideas and trying to convey information to people. Things like photos, but also social posts and all types of information that you see across the web. But the other problem is this information is increasingly all the more dynamic. It's updating in real time. And so increasingly, people want a presentation or an output that is truly reflective of the current state of things. Mm -hmm. But the second thing is that the pace of creating content is increasing too. Part of this is driven by social, right? People want to be able to create, publish, and share information faster than ever before, right? It's that instant gratification idea. But the other thing is that people have access to an increasing number of apps, which means that they have less and less time to spend in any one app getting to really master all of its intricate details. So really, now we're in this position where people really would love to just be able to take all of their ideas and all their content and just give it to a digital assistant and have them do all the hard work and heavy lifting to create a polished, cohesive output. And that is what Sway really provides. So not only is it giving you this new type of web-oriented output, but it's also doing it with assisted authoring and content aggregation. And that is what Sway is all about, Jeremy. Very cool. So now we know what Sway is. Over the next 10 minutes, we're going to have a look at how you create a Sway, how that actually works. But first, we caught up with Chris Prattley, who's a lead engineer on the Sway team, to hear from him. So how does Sway become your own personal design assistant? Well, what we wanted to do with Sway was to break out of the traditional trap of either picking a template that someone has pre-designed, which is going to be limited and kind of the same thing that everyone else can use, or forcing the user to have incredible design skills, which most of us don't have. And instead, we invented a new way, which was to work with our in-house professional designers to capture their instincts and their design skills in an algorithm, an expert system of design. For example, we asked them, given a certain kinds of content, words, pictures, videos, and so on, how would you like to arrange this? What are the rules that you use to make it look great? And we worked with them over time to encode that into this system you see in Sway today, which is actually going to get much better over time. How else does this change the traditional authoring model? Well, in a number of ways. Um, the first way is that by using the uh, designer in a box algorithm that we have, we let you express as the user your intent. Rather than having to manually specify how everything should look or where it should be, you say something like, this is important, or keep these things together. And capturing that intent, we apply our algorithms and make your content look great. And the second part of that is, we use that capability when we put the content on different types of devices. So everyone knows today that you read on phones, sometimes in a portrait orientation, you read on a tablet, you read on desktop or laptop. Those screens are all different sizes and orientations. It's very hard to design something that looks good in all those environments unless it's really trivial. So what Sway does is we use our engine to make things look great 
and then depending on the device shape and orientation, we will reflow it, but we'll not just reflow, we'll relay it out. Sometimes we'll use an entirely different visualization that's appropriate for that device. So how close are we to achieving the end-to-end -end vision of Sway? Well, with the preview we're releasing today, we're just at the very beginning. We have the fundamental building blocks in place, and some little parts of the vision are lit up. But over the next while, we'll be lighting up more of that vision and showing how machine learning and personalization plays into this. You'll see more styles, you'll see more smarts around layout, you'll see more visualizations. It's going to be very exciting. So we've seen this way, we've heard the vision, but David, can you show me how to create one? Yeah, sounds good, Jeremy. And actually, I'm going to start here on this iPhone because we do, after all, live in this mobile-first, cloud-first world. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch Sway. And the first thing you'll see here, Jeremy, is that I have all the Sways that we've been creating before, and we're logged in as the Garage Series account. Mm -hmm. But I, it's very easy for me on this mobile device to go ahead and create a new one right from scratch. So we've thought from the ground up about how to make it easy to get your ideas right into Sway and start creating your content. So the first thing we'll do is we'll give it a title. Let's say that you're going to go ahead and create a Sway to tell your friends and coworkers about how the Garage Series is doing and what its history has been all about. Sounds good. So we'll say Garage Series Recap. There we go. So Garage Series Recap, title's added. Now it's very easy to add a photo. Now actually, I think what we'll do is let's add this to the Garage Series portfolio of content. Switch and do what I think may be the very first <laughs> Garage Series selfie. You ready? Yes. All right. There we go. So there's the selfie. We'll add the photo, get it right into Sway. You see, it's very easy to get it right in. And now if we want to go ahead and actually add a caption, Jeremy and I on the Garage Series about Sway. Great voice to text capability here to make it very easy That's to awesome. input all that content. And then I can just swipe here and give that some emphasis right away. So you see very nice, intuitive, easy to use gestures on this mobile device here. And then if we want to go see how it's going to look using Sway's assisted authoring, you can see that Sway is coming together right away. And I can see exactly how it's looking. Now we can change the styles. We can do other things um, from mobile devices as well. But let's actually switch to the web and see how this is coming along and continue working on it on the web. Straight from your PC. OK. So here, Jeremy, here we are on my My Sways page, and you can see all the Sways that I have here in my account, in this case, our account as the Garage Series. And there's that Garage Series recap that we just started on that iPhone. Again, cloud-first world, that means the content's available on all my devices. Yep. So I'm just going to tap in here to keep working on this Sway. And here I am, this is what we call the storyline, or where I really, as an author, think about what's the content that I want to put in here. And then if I tap, I can always see how that content is coming together, and it's dynamically updated by Sway's design engine as we go along. Right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to start adding more content. You can see what we did on mobile already showing up, but we have more content that we want to add. And actually, one of the things that we've already done is, like any good person preparing a narrative, We've been thinking about and putting all of our notes together here in OneNote. Right. So I can go ahead and just, cr just copy all that content. We'll come back to our Sway right here. Tap, go add that text, paste it right in. Great. So now we have a bunch of content that we want to add in text form. And you can see in the background, Sway is already updated with all that text right in here. Again, it's doing a lot of that grunt work for me. So I'm just thinking about what's going in here. Right. But now we want to start to give this Sway more structure. We want to start adding things like sections and associating certain pieces of content and groupings. And it's really easy to do that. So I'll just tap here to make that a header. We'll tap this to make it a header. And now we'll start giving each of the seasons their own header. Season 1, Season 2, Season 3, and of course Season 4, which is in progress. And you can see, you see in the background, the Sway is automatically updating itself as I'm adding all that content, dynamically building can itself. Can we take a look? Yeah, let's take a look. So now you see these different sections coming together. Wow, There are some great. sections for each of the seasons. You know, but this is starting to look pretty good in terms of the structure, but we want to add more multimedia to really tell the story of the Garage Series. Yeah, we, we, are a video, we are a video series after all, right? Definitely need some photos. Absolutely. So now I can just tap here and start adding content. And you can see the content pane comes in and gives me lots of different sources from which I can easily add content right into my Sway. So in this case, let's say we have a bunch of photos that we've stored in OneDrive from the history of the Garage series here. And here we go, some great uh, photos from across the Garage series. So I can just add this one maybe as the header image. It's just going to drag and drop it right in there. 
And you can see in the background, Sway has automatically taken that photo, made it full bleed, made it really nicely showing up here as a title image. Very cool. But let's go add more content to these other sections. So we'll add this one after there. We have this nice animated gift, GIF that, we're, uh, that we can add right to this section. And then we can start to give each of the seasons their own header image. You know, for me, the canonical image for season one is a skydiver. Yep, so let's just drag that guy right in. Season two. A lot, of, a lot of great things in season two. We went to New Orleans, did a lot of things on, in the bayou, so very cool stuff there as well. Yeah, this fan boat's really sweet. Let's get, these, let's get these pictures right in here. You can see I'm just dragging them right onto the canvas. And in fact, if I want to start grouping them together, I can just tap, tap, click that lightning bolt, which is the transform option, and I'm going to add a visualization. In this case, I'll go ahead and add this stack transform. You saw me do that stack right, earlier on the, on the PPI. PPI. That's exactly how easy it was to make that stack with two pieces of content. So we'll go ahead, we'll keep adding more media to really show off exactly what each of these seasons has been about. Season three, looks like you really, you really went international with season three. Yeah, we went to Hong Kong and Dubai and Spain. It was really cool. Yep. We'll go ahead, we'll group those together as well. This time we'll just do a simple grouping because we actually want to just keep that uh, kind of together. But now we actually want to go ahead and add some more interactive multimedia, not just, not just uh, photos, but let's go ahead and add some videos too. So let's go back to media. Go here to YouTube, Office 365 Garage Series. There we go. Yep. And so it looks like, I think this, uh, this episode with Mark that Cashman. That is the one. Yeah, yep. that's the one I was looking for. There you go. That one is all about collaboration. Sway is a great new tool for creating content, definitely in the spirit of Office. And then season three, here's that, uh, here's that one out in the desert. That was a really cool video shoot that you did. That was cool. But it's not just YouTube, which is the only type of interactive content that you can have here in the Sway. So let's actually go to Twitter and get some real tweet content that so we can we add do right a, in. Do a search for hash garage series. Garage series. So it looks like here's a tweet. We'll just drag that one on in here. Awesome. So let's actually take a look at how this thing's come together. And then we can make more updates right on the canvas itself. So we see there's that header image. We have this nice garage series photo. And right while I'm looking at the output, if I want to make some very natural decisions about how to change content around, I can do that. I can just tap and decide, hey, maybe I want to actually showcase this picture more, bump up the showcase setting just a little bit more, maybe center it, make it a little bit bigger. So you see I'm making a very natural statement about, hey, this picture should be bigger or smaller, or these pieces mm -hmm. of content should be grouped together. I'm not making very granular, like, put this exact photo at this X and Y location on the screen, right. this many pixels wide by that many pixels high. Um, I'm letting Sway handle a lot, of that, uh, a lot of that design work for me and let me make these easy decisions. So in this case, here we have all these different sections. There's that stack. There's that video there. There's some more photos. And of course, down at the bottom, we'll see the photo that we've added and that tweet. Let's actually make the photo of us a little bit smaller, have that nicely in line with that tweet. Again, kind of kicking off season four, getting great content in there. Great. So even beyond that, I think we can, we can do some stuff to actually change the look and feel this way. Because on the PPI, we were scrolling horizontally. Can we do that here as well? Exactly. That's one of the things that's really great about Sway as an authentic web output, is we can have all sorts of different types of layout for your content. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a linear layout from start to end, one sequence of content, or nonlinear layouts where you can sort of let your viewers pick their own ending for the way that your narrative is really coming together. Lots of, lots of great options. And so if we want to start to change some of those things, we can come into style here, and structure is where we can change that layout of content. Right now you've seen a vertical uh, linear layout. Let's change to that horizontal mode you saw. Great. And so now you can see it has that horizontal scrolling action like you saw me doing on the PPI. That looks terrific. But now let's say we actually want to change the personality of the Sway a little bit more. We can actually change the mood or the color scheme too. But the thing that's really interesting is Sway can actually look at the content and suggest different color palettes that you might want to use. So you see here there are a few pictures that Sway is triggering off of and saying, hey, you know, if we pick this GIF, there's this sort of orange palette, and we can play around with a few of these colors here. Or you can start to use some of Sway's pre-populated moods um, to, get, to get a different type of design layout um, put together. In this case, I actually think that this sort of gray, very kind of gritty 
look and feel is actually a pretty good one. And that font's actually pretty cool for Garage Series. Yeah, that font is pretty sweet. And so you can see that this thing is really starting to come together nicely. And so at this point, you know, you've seen me get content into Sway very quickly. You've seen Sway help me by choosing from all those different sources how to get my content in and then helping me lay it out as my design assistant. But the next thing is really all about sharing. Today's world, there's no point in putting ideas down if you're not going to share it. That's what it's all about. Right. So we make it very easy to go ahead and share. So you can see I can share through social networks. I can, of course, go email it. We can even generate an HTML embed code if you want to put your Sway embedded on a website, like a blog or something like that. And the exciting thing here, I think, as well, is that we can view this not only on our PC when it's all finished, but even on the phone, it's going to look great, right? Exactly. So let's actually go back to the phone here. And here, you're actually seeing me view the Sway, not in the Sway app itself, but actually in the Safari browser, just to show that anybody that I've shared my Sway with can go look at it. All they need is a browser. They don't need to install additional software. And so you can see that Sway is adapting the layout to make it really optimized for my device. And so kind of from a side-by-side -side basis, we can just scroll through here. And we can see the different sections and how that content okay. is rendering across devices. It's refloating really text nicely. And some of the photos, all that stuff is optimized really for the screen size. Exactly. And so you can see it's a really beautiful, very, very authentic uh, experience for viewing this content across devices. And that's fundamental in this mobile first, cloud first world. This looks terrific. So being able to view it on any device, being able to create it very easily, really cloud first, ease of creation. I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on this and really using this not only for the garage series but all of my personal stories that I tell in office. So that's about all the time we have for today. Before we wrap up, let's have a look at today's trivia. True or false? All you need is a web browser to view a sway. So of course the answer is true. We actually just saw all of this sway adapted to the screen size I was working on. Yep. So all of this is brand new. It's a brand new office app experience. It's built for the web. It's digital first content. Yep, and because it's so adaptive, Sway is going to keep getting better and better over time. And I know I've been swayed, but I think the people at home are really interested when they can start using this. Yeah, so that's the thing. So Sway is in preview right now, which means that we got enough done to put it in front of you and have you really test it out, give us lots of great feedback to help us make it better for what you really need it to be. So go to www.sway.com and request an invite to join Sway Preview. This is really exciting stuff. It's about all the time we have for today. You can follow us on Twitter and stay up to date on The Garage on Wednesdays. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now. Bye-bye.